All right, hello YouTube. Been a while. I'm still in Vegas. I am currently dog sitting for my friend's aunt's dog. So if at some point in time, oh, okay, he was here the whole time, and the moment I started talking, he walked away. I guess he realized that I will not be playing with him right now. Okay, we're doing one of your guys' favorite types of videos. If you guys are wondering, yes, I know I look a little bit odd. My face is a little bit swollen, especially my eyes. Don't want to get into it. Uh, I wanted to do a video talking about two books that I feel are very similar in terms of what they're trying to promote and in terms of like diversity, um, you know, people of color and women and queer and you guys know I hate that term queer. Uh, unfortunately, that is the word that the authors decided to use. So I wanted to kind of talk about these two books because I felt they are very similar, but I think one of them did a very good, good job of being woke and the other did a very bad job of being woke. So the two books we're going to talk about and right away from the covers, you can kind of see um, what kind of books I'm generally attracted to. And this is actually a kind of issue of mine that I find myself always getting very frustrated at. Because on the one hand, I do really enjoy reading and even watching movies and stuff about perspectives that are very different from mine. I think that's one of the wonderful things about books is that you do get a chance to place yourself into a perspective that is very different from yours, you know. And so I openly admit I do read a lot of books that are either written or the characters are, you know, black or Indian or Native American. There's actually a book about a Native American... Uh, about a Native American couple that I really want to read, but... I'm a paperback kind of guy, and it's not in paperback yet, so I'm going to wait. But yeah, also about lesbians and gay people, I've talked about this on my channel so much. I'm always open for new gay and lesbian books uh, that are well-written, which very, very few are, um, <laughs> unfortunately, at least gay ones. Anyway, so this is just something I find myself really attracted to. But then at the same time, I was talking with, you know, um, Natalia, who's like a subscriber friend of mine now, uh, about this. And she's like, you always set yourself up to get frustrated. And I was like, it's kind of true. Because on the one hand, I'm very attracted to these kind of stories. But then these kind of stories are also the ones that tend to always be the most woke and ridiculous. And then I get frustrated. Like, I would so very much enjoy to read a book that is from the perspective of a gay black woman or an Indian black an Indian black woman an Indian gay woman or you know a black teen in a wheelchair or something like that I would love to read these kind of books and be enjoy the enjoy actually reading them but the authors always have to insert their wokeness into it and I'm like why can't we have books from people of color, from gay people, from women, from all this kind of stuff, without all the woke crap all the time. You know, like, I just find that so... And it's in the movies now. Everywhere you go, it's just they have to force their politics on you. So anyway, the point of this video, after four minutes, is that that is what happens in both of these books. And they're both woke, but one of them did it in a way where I was like, I don't agree with the politics of this book, but I can still enjoy this book. And the other one did it where I'm like, I can't even get myself to enjoy this book because you are so on the nose with your politics to the point where it's just, it just feels like you're preaching to me. And that's not an enjoyable thing. Anyway, so uh, five minutes in, I haven't even said the name of the books yet. So one is called A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. That's this one. I think this is such a beautiful cover. And I admit this cover was like, whoa, I need to read this book. 
And the other one is called The Henna Wars. And I apologize, I'm probably going to butcher this name by Adiba Jagirdar. Jagirdar. And it looks like this. And I also think this is a super beautiful cover. Uh, all right. So, A Song Below Water is a story of two best friends. I feel like this book was sold to me as if it was going to be a lesbian romance, which it is not, which is fine. It's They're just friends, which is fine. Not every book always has to have a romance. Um, but I feel like it was, I feel like the channel that recommended it said that there was like a gay couple or something in here, but that's not the case. But that's the way it was sold to me. That was one of the things that intrigued me. And this book is about these two friends. Forgot both of their names. Does it say it in the back? It does not. I forgot both of their names already. And one of them, this one, she is a siren. And this one... Okay. Hmm. I'm not going to say what this one is, because otherwise there's be, it would be a spoiler. But this one... There's also, maybe she's some kind of magical being, but they're not completely sure till towards the end of the book. Uh, they go to the same school. The girl who is a siren is an outcast. And because she is a siren, which in this world, it is very terrible to be a siren. But the the author also constantly kind of uses the siren argument as basically in our reality black women you know the worst thing you could be is a black woman and everybody hates black women basically is the political undertone of the book and so she struggles with being a siren and not being able to tell anyone because in society that's a bad thing and she's afraid that if she told anyone that she might get beat up or thrown in jail or something something and this one this character is just trying to figure out if she is some kind of magical creature or not so that's kind of the plot of this one then the henna wars the plot is these two girls go to the same school and she is this takes place in ireland However, she, her background is Bangla, Bengali, Bengali, is that what people from Bangladesh are called? Um, she is Bengali and she is Brazilian background and they are tasked by their business teacher to come up with some kind of business and the student who creates the best business plan or whatever wins like a thousand euros and maybe something else i forgot and they are initially already attracted to each other they are lesbians or i think maybe she's she's supposed to be bi or something uh they're initially attracted to each other you think something's gonna happen and then the brazilian girl says that she wants to do henna as her business model and then there is this big woke fight because the Bengali girl says you can't do henna because that would be cultural appropriation because it's not part of your culture. And she says, well, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm free to do whatever kind of art or thing that I'm interested in and you can't stop me. So then, you know, they kind of a falling out because of this. And then in the end you know, they get back together. That's probably a spoiler, sorry. Yeah, okay. So that's the plot of the two. And this is the book that was terrible. It was a terrible, terrible read. And this was the book that even though there was a bunch of woke stuff in it, I would actually go and recommend this to people, okay? So <laughs> you there is literally all these pages where I like annotated where I was just like there is so much hypocrisy in this book you know where um let me search it now. like the, oh god oh yeah right here I read my note there, there's this one scene where the siren girl she's driving the she's driving her father's uh sports car 
luxury vehicle. Like they have like a whole paragraph and a half talking about what an amazing car the father has. And she's driving it and she's like 13 or 14 or something like that. Or maybe she's driving. Maybe she's like, no, she can't be that young because I think she has a driver's license. So maybe 16 or something. And she admits to driving around, I think, where was she? I think she was near a cemetery or something, if I remember correctly. She's driving around this cemetery several times in her father's luxury car. And she gets pulled over by the police. And the police, even the way the author wrote it, were completely polite. And were just like, hey, we need to see your license and registration. And then she goes home and, t and talks with a friend and she's like, I'm so traumatized. I'm so traumatized. They pulled me over only because I'm a black woman. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it was like, it was just like, it was just so, it was terrible. It was so on the nose. It was this constantly su circling back to how oppressed black women are and how difficult it is to be a black woman and you know how horrible men are men are just complete crap and everybody is terrible and um the writing was really bad too that so that didn't help either but there was just so much hypocrisy and then there was this part where the siren the siren character was just super annoying she was basically telling other people how they need to stop complaining so much and all this kind of stuff but then anytime she had a problem she wanted everybody to listen to her and she complained she's like nobody understands how hard it is to be black and be a woman and be a siren and i have the most difficult life of everyone everybody needs to follow my problems and feel sympathetic of me but then the moment any of her other friends had an issue then she was kind of like, oh, you need to grow up and you need to grow up here and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, that is really hypocritical of you. Like, I just don't understand. It was, it was, there was just too, it's just a terrible book. It's terribly written. Um, let me see what I'm point to. He isn't into her and yeah, I didn't like he beat her. Um, yeah. And then she was like, for a short while, she was interested in this with some guy who treated her totally normally but then decided that he didn't want to be with her anymore. And her and her friends, they're all like, fuck him, fuck him, fuck the patriarchy, fuck everything. And I'm just kind of like, I was like, so now a guy isn't even allowed to just legitimately not be interested in you anymore without it being the patriarchy and all men are horrible and everything is evil. It was just, I mean, probably should have read some of these notes before I, um, yeah, this was the one with the traffic. Uh, I don't know. She, yeah, this is where we talked about like she tells everybody else they need to grow up, but she gets to complain as much as she wants. Uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, here I hope. Oh, Naima, that was her name. I hope Naima knows this too. Even if she's not a siren, I hope she gets that. Had my traffic stop gone off the rails, my protest would have gotten half the press I'd get if I'd been a boy. And I'm just like, it's just so on the nose. It's just constant like, oh my God, it's so hard being black. It's so hard being a woman and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this doesn't need to be in a book. Like this, it's just so pandering and it just, it didn't help the story, which didn't make any sense anyway, because they live in this world of magical creatures. There's gargoyles, there's mermaids, there's fairies and all this kind of stuff. But being a siren is like some kind of crazy, <gasps> everybody hates sirens. It's so difficult to be a siren. I was like, this makes no sense. You live in a world of all kinds of magical creatures, but for some reason being a siren is this big a hoop de hoo and everybody's so against them. And I, I just was like, that, that plot already makes no sense. Um... Oh, yeah, and then she hears there's this part where she talks about, like, her favorite teacher. He's like, oh, yeah, this one teacher is my favorite. But even he isn't woke enough because he doesn't really understand how difficult it is to be a woman. Ba 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 ba. Just like, yeah. Uh, this book was terrible. It was super preachy. It was just all these woke concepts that by now anybody who follows my channel knows, you know, about how... There's no place in the world that's as oppressive as the U.S. Oh, and this takes place in Portland, of all places. And I'm just kind of like, 
Portland is like the kingdom of the woke. It is the most woke place on earth. And this author, who I'm assuming lives in Portland, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> really, really, you're going to write a book and even say that a place like Portland is still not woke enough and is still like just this terrible place to live and it's so oppressive and you you just have no chances in life and everybody is against you and I'm just like it just never ends it just never ends with the woke people like no matter what you say no matter what you do you're it's not going to be woke enough they're still going to find a reason to be bitchy and complaining about it and it was just everything was so on the nose it was just such a turn off to read and like and she's just not a strong enough author. And the plot wasn't... The plot was just... The, the plot made no sense at all. The plot made no sense. There was no world building. She never explained why... For what... Why, why people had a problem with sirens when they were completely okay with every other magical creature in the world. She didn't explain how any of the magic system works. Nothing. It, um, yeah. And... It was just so... It's just bad. It's just really, really bad. Um, now, on the other hand, the Henna Wars, um, also very woke, but I will say that the author is a very strong author. She's, she, she, the plot was very concise. She didn't add any information that didn't work with the plot, including her woke statements. She added them in a way where I'm like, okay this woke statement makes sense within the context of what is happening in this novel. It's not like out of nowhere, one of these girls is kind of like, I hate having curly hair because the straight white man, you know, fetishizes curly hair. And that's why life is so hard, like out of nowhere. Like, no, I think one of the arguments, like I said, is about cultural appropriation and because they were actually in a competition doing something that is traditionally from like the Indian subcontinent uh, and maybe the Middle East as well. Uh, it makes sense that then they would have this conversation about is it cultural appropriation or not, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, I get where this author is coming from. I understand that her politics are woke. And, but... She included it in a way where I'm like, okay, this is just her opinion. I don't have to agree. I can still enjoy the book and the plot and the storyline and the really great writing without having to, without like it being kind of, how am I trying to say this? In this book, it's clear that the author is basically attacking you, the reader. She's basically constantly saying, you, the reader, are a piece of crap because my life is so much harder because I'm a black woman and obviously black women have it harder anywhere from anybody, from anybody in the world. You couldn't possibly ever have a problem or a life harder than us, which if you're living in the USA, I already said I'm done with this argument. That's a bunch of crap. Um, here, it wasn't like you're a bad person. Like, you should reconsider all of your ideas, and I'm super woke, and you're not, and you're, the reader is bad. No, it's just kind of like, these are things that fit into the plot, and they were being discussed. Um, so this book, I actually would recommend to other people, even like people who say that I'm not woke, so I don't really enjoy woke writing. I'd be like, okay, this has some woke ideas in it but the story is still very strong and the writing is very strong and it makes a lot of sense um there was one place where i left a note i even left my little tag in here yay my friend she's also a teacher and her school is promoting um reading so they do this thing where you get you can't see it Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, oh, okay. So, at the very end of the book, um, the business teacher announces the winner. It's neither one of these girls. Oops, that was a spoiler, wasn't it? Ooh, sorry, I guess it's not a spoiler-free video. Uh, 
but a different team that also has a girl who I think is from Korea on it. And this girl goes into the bathroom and overhears like two white girls saying something along the lines of, the only reason that Korean girl won is because nowadays everybody caters to minorities because they're afraid of potentially looking racist or something like that. So of course, of course they gave it to the Korean girl. And the Bengali girl is super upset and she and she's kind of like, how dare they say something like that? That is so wrong and that's so mean and you can't say these kind of things. That's an overgeneralization and that's not fair. Like the Korean girl, she really won. She really deserved it. And as I said, overall, I'm okay with the politics in this book. But in that moment, that was the one thing where I kind of, you can see, I wrote myself a little note because I was like, to me here, this, that was one part of the book where I was like, the hypocrisy here to me is like crazy because you know, you know, you know that if a white girl or a white boy had won, her and all the other minority group kids would have been in the bathroom saying like, of course they only let a white person win because everything is racism and they only let white people win because it's the patriarchy and the racism and blah, blah, blah. And I'm kind of like, it is basically the exact same argument. So to me, I'm kind of like, I find that to be so hypocritical and it's something I so dislike. I like I dislike it from both the left and the right because I think they both do it, but I think the left does it more so where they are so quick to throw out terms like the patriarchy and homophobia and you know, I don't know, white supremacy and all this kind of stuff. And everything is everything is racism, everything is white supremacy, everything is white people fragility, blah 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 blah. When things don't go their way. But when things do go their way and somebody is upset, then it's all like, no, that's not fair, that's not right, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, that is complete hypocrisy. I mean, you can't you can't claim that everything that is in favor of heterosexuality, of white people, of men, is rooted in racism and homophobia and sexism, but then in turn not be willing to also admit that we have a lot of things in place nowadays like hiring quotas and affirmative action that are in benefit just for minorities like so i'm just i'm like you can't have it both ways you know what i mean like so i just thought that was complete hypocrisy in this book because yeah so anyway i uh, finished both of these books like within this last week i think do not read this book. Do not support this author. By the way, this author is very racist. She hates you. She hates men. She hates white people. <laughs> she makes it very clear in this book, so don't support her financially. Um, unlike me, who's an idiot, who did before I realized what this was about, but I don't, I don't believe in that only white people can be racist. She's clearly racist, and she's clearly a misogynist. And I don't want to support people like that, so I will not be supporting her any going further. Um, on the other hand, The Henna Wars, if you are looking for a book that does have representation, that has a different point of view, um, if you're just curious about reading a book that maybe does address some woke ideas, but does it in a non-preachy way, just because you're kind of like, yeah, I also would like to read about what the other side thinks and says, then yeah, I do recommend this book because if nothing else, I think the plot is really fun and the writing is very strong. Okay, so that's it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys enjoyed my all over the place and take care, be safe. I think maybe next week, next week is my last week in Vegas and I'm probably gonna do one book review of what I've read since returning to the US. Or should I do that after I leave again the US? I don't know yet. But maybe I'll do one more video next week. Maybe even with my friend Tiana, if she's willing. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, bye.